This is part three of the skin. Uh, so we're just continuing our journey through various skin disorders. Skin tumors or skin cancer uh, is another area that uh, can affect skin. Um, there are three main types of skin cancer. Uh, the two least serious types of skin cancer are called basal cell uh, carcinoma or squamous cell carcinoma. And both of these types of tumors are caused by DNA mutations that occur in um, the epidermis, in the very bottom layer of the epidermis. And uh, these cells lose control of division and they divide, divide, and then they spread into the dermis area and into the subcutaneous tissue. Uh, the thing that usually causes the DNA to mutate is the UV radiation. And so usually on these types of tumors occur on uh, sun exposed parts of the body, so face, particularly nose, you know, cheeks, maybe shoulders, etc. Um, basal cell carcinoma is relatively slow growing and it metastasizes fairly slowly. Um, so there's a 99% cure rate if the lesion is removed surgically. So that's this one right here. Squamous cell carcinoma starts as a red scaly lesion, usually again on these sun exposed areas, um, but it grows much more rapidly and metastasizes to lymph fairly quickly. So um, any type of odd lesions that seem to be growing should be checked as soon as possible and um, because the earlier that it's treated, the better the, the prognosis or the better the outcome. The most serious type of um, skin cancer is, is uh, malignant melanoma. Now this is cancer of the melanocytes. If you remember, they're in the bottom layer of the epidermis and they produce that pigment melanin. So it's these particular specialized cells that lose control of cell division and uh, and that's why malignant melanoma usually starts in very pigmented areas such as moles. Um, it's the most aggressive, it grows the most rapidly and metastasizes to lymph very, very quickly and so can cause secondary tumors um, much more readily than basal cell or squamous cell carcinoma. So uh, it's a good idea to do periodic mole checks um, and have anything that looks suspicious to have that checked out. In general, you can use the ABCD rule or guidelines. So A stands for asymmetry. So if the two sides of the mole don't match, if, they're, if it's asymmetrical, then that's something that might, that might have to be checked out. Um, secondly, if the borders are not smooth, if they're jagged. Thirdly, if it has multiple colors, particularly if it has reds, blues um, uh, within that uh, the mole. And D is for diameter, if it's larger than six millimeters, and particularly if it's growing. Um, any mole that is changing shape, and uh, then that should be checked out as well. So if you've got an odd looking mole, but you've had it since you were a baby, that is probably not malignant melanoma. But if you have an odd shaped mole that has appeared and is looking odder and odder, uh, then that is something that definitely needs to be checked out. The last section that I'm going to talk about are parasitic infections of the skin. Uh, I'm going to talk about two in particular that are the most common that you're more likely to run into um, as a professional in the field. So the first is scabies. Now scabies is caused by a, a tiny mite and we can see that what the mite looks like. This is a very high magnification of the mite. Usually we found these mites in, in warm, moist places, so in folds of skin, so in the groin area or under breasts or between fingers and toes. Uh, the mites burrow underneath the surface of the skin and so you can kind of see these little tunnels as they tunnel under the skin and they bite and they lay eggs and they drop waste products there and that causes these pustules to form and causes itching. Uh, scabies are spread by direct contact from one person that has scabies, you know, to another. Um, treatment is a medication called permethrin. Uh, there are some, some medications out there that, are, that use lindane, but you should avoid those. Um, this is a body shampoo and you put it all over your body and you leave it on uh, for a period of time and then you wash it all off. Uh, that should get rid of the mites. 
although the itching may last another three to four weeks, even if all of the, the treatments of the mites are successful. I'm going to spend a couple slides talking about lice, because this is very, very common, particularly in schools or camps where there are kids. Um, lice are very tiny, wingless, parasitic insects. They live among human hairs, at least human lice do, and they feed on blood. So uh, the most common type of lice are head lice, and that, so it feeds on the scalp. There are lice that can live in pubic hair and in body hair, but uh, we're going to really talk specifically about head lice because that's the most common. Um, lice do not fly. They crawl fairly quickly. They can crawl about 23 centimeters per minute. Um, and so they don't fly or jump from person to person. But if there is direct contact, so you've got two kids that are playing together and their heads come together or you have sharing of costumes or hats or uh, brushes or combs or things like that, then there's direct contact and they will readily go to new real estate and set up shop in the next person over. Um, the life cycle of, of lice, so the female feeds on blood and then mates, um, and then in one or two days will lay eggs, and in 10 days the eggs will hatch, and in another 10 days that those lice, lice are ready to mate again. So that's the cycle. Um, what you can see on the left hand side here, this is an adult louse right here. Uh, this is a nymph, so this is a baby louse. And these are eggs, or called nits. And you can kind of get some size perspective if you look at this as hair right here. Or if you look in the right-hand picture, that in the fingertip right there, that is a adult louse. So it's about the size of, well, no bigger than a sesame seed for sure, often smaller. So the trick is, is trying to detect the lice. Oftentimes, um, kids will be itchy and they'll scratch or they may get a rash, is what you see in this picture here on the right. Although, it can be that um, itching may not appear for two to six weeks after infestation. So, um, usually kids will talk about feeling like something is tickling their heads or things are moving around. Um, that may come before the actual itching and scratching. The best thing to spot are the nits. And these are the eggs. And you see that on the left-hand picture here. They're kind of teardrop-shaped structures that are very, very firmly attached to the shaft of the hair. And um, they will be attached close to the scalp, so no more than um, you know, within a centimeter of the scalp, because it re relies on the heat of the scalp to incubate the egg. It goes for the warmest places, and so there are some hot spots to look for nits. So behind the ears, the nape of the neck, the brow. So I always, uh, when checking for lice, check in those spots first. Um, it's important to check the entire head to see if you find any, uh, but those are good places to look. You have to check in very, very small, thin sections of the hair. You can't grab a big ch a clump of hair and see the nits. So usually they use a couple sticks that they can separate very, very thin layers of the hair and check for nits there. Um, if you're looking in a kid's hair, you'll often find all sorts of stuff, including sand and sparkles and maybe um, dandruff. Um, if you can move it by brushing, then it is not a nit. In fact, in order to get the nit off the hair shaft, you have to use your fingernails. Even just grabbing with your fingers and pulling lightly will not remove the nit. Um, it's more common to see the nits than live lice on the scalp. They're, they move fairly quickly and they tend to hide and they, they run away when you expose them to light. And they tend to line themselves with the hair, like it's like standing behind a telephone pole. The other thing you might see is further away from the scalp, you might see some white or clear shells that are still attached to the shaft. These are uh, nits in which the louse has hatched already, and then it stayed attached to the hair shaft and the hair has grown. They're usually easier to spot than the ones that have a little black center, meaning that there's a little louse in them. Uh, the itching, just by the way, is due to reaction to the lice uh, saliva. And uh, again, it may not start right away. 
Okay, so if you detect lice, what do you do? Uh, there's a couple options. One is that you can go to um, the drugstore and you can get a medicated shampoo. Often it is permethrin at about 1%. Uh, you shampoo the hair with that and um, comb out lice and nits. And then you do a second treatment about in another seven days, just in case there were some eggs that hatched and, uh, and the medication didn't kill the eggs. Um, the, the thing about um, the permethrin is that there's a number of lice that are becoming resistant to permethrin now as they um, evolve. There's a less toxic solution which you can use and you have to do it more often. So not just once and then in, in seven days, but you could use a 50-50% sol solution of oil and vinegar. So essentially making a salad dressing and you run it all through the hair and leave it on the hair for you know 10 minutes or so. Um, and then uh, comb it out with a knit comb. We'll talk about that in a second. And if you did this you know, every day for um, maybe four or five or six days in a row, um, that's very effective. And, and there's no um, uh, toxicity with that. And uh, um, the only thing is, is that you do need to do it um, every day. So when you're combing out lice and nits, you need to get a lice comb. And I would highly recommend that you get a good metal comb with the teeth that are fairly close together. And it's good to section the hair and do it in small sections. So pull up all of the hair and then do it in little thin sections. Um, put the comb on an angle. And if you actually place your thumb on the hair close to the head, then it doesn't pull on the hair. It's also good if you're combing out to rub conditioner, a white conditioner in the hair, or just if you're using oil and vinegar, just use the oil and vinegar solution. Um, so if you've already washed the hair with the shampoo, then put in some white conditioner so that it, it helps uh, loosen and helps the comb run through the hair. And then you just pull down and then wipe the comb on a paper towel and then comb again and again and again until you don't see any nits or lice coming out on the comb. And then you move to the next se section. And um, if you do this, then it's going to be a lot more effective with whatever treatment that you're using if you try to remove those nits and, uh, and uh, lice. Um, uh, yeah, so you need to do this every day for at, uh, at least a week. Um, you need to check for lice once a day for, for at least a week until you don't find any more live nits. Um, you should wash clothing, bedding, stuffed animals, towels in hot water, you know, uh, same with combs and brushes, you know, you need to uh, wash them in hot water. Um, lice, lice will only survive a couple, several hours, so no more than 24 hours once they're away from the scalp. So, um, you know, you don't need to, you know, shampoo your rugs or things like that, but do wash the clothing and things and, uh, you know, hats pillowcases in hot water and put them in a hot dryer and that should be just fine. This is the end of the skin presentation and if you've got any questions please don't hesitate to give me a call.